National Tennis Centre, different perspective. This for the uh, sixth day of play in the 1991 Ford Australian Open. It's not just about the game of tennis, it's about all the accoutrements that uh, go with it. And all the manufacturers of the tennis rackets, the tennis clothing, the footwear, the tennis court surfaces are all represented here in a, a tennis expo. They've got exhibitions of their goods uh, and particularly important in this day and age where technology has played such a big part, an important impact on the modern game of tennis, particularly with rackets and footwear, uh, etc. They're all represented here and people mill through here uh, endlessly all through the day as they uh, take this into account between matches. It's a, it's a great innovation and it's certainly well worth looking at if you're coming out here to uh, Flinders Park. Well, let's talk now about tennis. And we've seen some absolutely marvellous tennis. What about the Boris Becker match last night? Let's check yesterday's results for you, the uh, centre court to fixtures. Guy Forget defeated Michael Stick of Germany in four sets. Steffi Graf, the defending champion, over Australia's Nicole Provis in straight sets. And Richard Krychek, the Netherlands player, uh, served up a storm to defeat Darren Kale, also in four sets, 7-6 in the fourth. And then, of course, last night on centre court, Rachel McQuillan, the only Aussie girl now left in women's singles, defeated Stacey Shefflin of the United States, 6-4, six, 6-love, six, and Todd Woodbridge hanging in there. Good on you, Todd. 7-5, uh, 6-2, six, 6-1, six, defeated the number eight seed, Jonas Svensson. And, of course, as I said, the Boris Becker match on the outside court. Always one fly, isn't it? Uh, Boris Becker, 14-12 surviving narrowly against Omar Camparisi of Italy. Sensational tennis, and you're going to see sensational tennis here today again at the National Tennis Centre. This is what we've got in store for you. Mats Veranda opens the account on centre court today against Brad Gilbert, the scrapper from the United States. Karen Kishwent from Switzerland against Monica Sellis, the two-handed sensation. Ivan Lendl against Magnus Gustafsson, that's the day program. Tonight, Naoko Sawamatsu of Japan against Mary Jo Fernandez, last year's finalist. And look at this one, Stefan Edberg against Pat Cash. Well, if you think that you've seen sensational tennis in our seven sports coverage of this Australian Open so far, don't go away because the matches we've got lined up today and this evening will be just as great. And I'm particularly looking forward to this rematch. And I say rematch. In the women's draw for these 1991 championships, the number two seed, Monica Sellers, has been devastating thus far. Will she continue that form on centre court now? She's up against a young lady from Luxembourg, Karen Kishvent. Our commentators for this match are John Brady and Wendy Turnbull. Yeah, thanks very much, Gary. Monica Sellers back on court. She's lost just one game in two matches in four sets of tennis. That's quite a record. Uh, that is quite a feat at the Grand Slams these days. And, uh, but Monica's played extremely well, and she hasn't let her opponents into the matches at all. The thing about her is that she's done it so quickly in a match. Is, uh, 38 minutes the first match took against Sabine Hack. She won it love and love. 45 minutes the second, uh, she really seems to be tunnel visioned about really wanting to get out there, win the match and get off the court. Well, she's a professional. She knows that you can't afford to let a player into a match at all and um, she wants to win it as quickly as possible. She gets plenty of practice out there. She's mentally tough. She said she was tired coming into the Australian Open, so she doesn't want to have any long matches if she can avoid it. Well, Karen Schvent is... Uh not unaccustomed to situations like this. She reached the third round of Wimbledon this year, having come through the qualifying. That was quite an achievement from Karen, really. And uh, she's in this tournament already uh, handled Regina Rykatova. Now, that's, that's a very good win, because Regina was playing some good tennis. Yes, and she beat Regina quite convincingly, one and one. And uh, she'll provide some um, tough opposition for Monica. But Monica has to go in, into this match definitely the favourite. What does Karen do in it, though? A right-hander, uh, very fast around the court with a good forehand, but nothing that you would think is going to kill Monica, so how does she have to play it? Well, she can't beat her from the baseline, that's for sure, and uh, so she'll have to, like, work out what she can do against Monica because she's never played her before, so everything's completely different for both players because they haven't played each other. Well, let's take a look at the uh, Craft 3 profile, starting with... The lady of the moment, the number two seed, Monica Sella, 17 years of age. She's won nine singles tournaments this year. Of course, the French Open, the youngest ever French Open winner. Uh, the Virginia Slims in five sets. Interestingly, the way, and one of the things you've got to think about this match, is that Monica has a tendency never to lose to the top players, but she lost six matches last year. Five of them were against players that you would have expected Monica Sellers to have beaten. So uh, that's one thing she'll have to keep on her mind. The only big name player, in fact, to beat her last year was Martina Navratilova. Well, Monica's a tougher player now mentally. Some of those early round losses were at the beginning of 1990, and she hasn't lost much towards the end of 1990. But her opponent today, Zuff, uh, it's a very difficult match for her. Karen Schwent from Luxembourg. 
22 years of age, ranked 118 in the world in 1988, won at Palermo. And she was a finalist at the Austrian circuit in 1990, a third round of Wimbledon. She plays Federation Cup for Luxembourg. In doubles, she won at Palermo and Athens and at the Spanish circuit and a semi-finalist on the Austrian circuit and Paris doubles. So she's quite capable at the net and if she can, she should come to the net against Monica. Well, a big job for her, Karen Schwent against Monica Sellis. The umpire for the match is Fran McDowell. Number two seed, Monica Sellis against Karen Schwent of Luxembourg. And there'll be one interesting thought going through Monica's mind in this match. Her last Grand Slam outing was, of course, the US Open. And it was in the third round of the US Open that uh, she was upset by Linda Ferrando. 1-6-6-1-7-6. So it's funny, it does play on your mind if that's happened to you before when you come back, Wendy. And it is. It's a big psychological thing. But I think Monica is a much more experienced player every Time. match she plays. And Linda Ferrando actually chair. played a very good match against Monica. She came in a lot, attacked Monica's serve, coming in Schwende on Monica's double-handed forehand Fire side. Uh, so it was a very interesting tactical game that Ferrando played when she beat Monica. Thirty all. It's up break point, and as Wendy mentioned, it would be hard for Kshivent to try and trade shots at the baseline. And it's proving exactly that. Game Sellers first game. Sellers breaks in the opening game. U.S. forces in the Gulf have stepped up their hunt for the mobile launchers used by Iraq to send missiles into Israel. And twice last night, air raid sirens were heard in Tel Aviv. Both were false alarms. While Israel vows to counterattack, the heaviest bombardment in uh, history continues over Iraq. Allied forces are flying more than 2,000 missions a day. The Iraqis say they'll soon put captured Allied pilots on display. 
Contact lights. Okay, engine stopped. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Okay, Neil. We can see you coming down the ladder now. You're looking good. Okay, I'm gonna step off the limb now. That's one small step for man. Would the greatest event in the world be quite as great on anything less than Fuji film? Fuji, the film of your life. Good crowds all around at each of the courts. The two show courts you can Sellers see there as well as centre court. It's the view from the Regent Hotel. Monica Sellis has broken in the opening game. That was a good tactic by Schwent to bring Salas into the net. It was quite a good drop shot, but you could see just how quickly Monica got in there. And once she got there, doing something with the ball. Game Sellers holds two up. Tennis Australia. Hope you're enjoying today's play on Seven Summer of Tennis. Certainly, Monica Sellers enjoying it so far. Two love she leads. tough to read where Monica's hitting those double-handed ground strokes. Well, that's what you've said she has to do, Wendy, but it can be hard to get into the net against Monica at times, and you know, that was one of the opportunities that she got. Very good return from Salas right at Schwent's feet. Very good racket work there. I don't think she meant it to be quite as good as it was.
40-15. Well, excellent court coverage from Kashvin. But Monica hesitated when she came to the net. She saw she had the opportunity, but she was a fraction of a second late. Schwen had to work very hard to win that point. Game spent on the scoreboard, but Sellers still leads two. Sellers leads two one. Oh, give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. Don't fence me in. Let me ride through the wide open country that I love. Sanford Downs, lots of land for sale. For around the same money, you can live surrounded by other people's property, or you could live surrounded by your own property on an acreage home site at Samford Downs from as little as $74,900. Monica Sellis leading 2-1 with a break in hand. And she is really hitting the ball very firmly indeed. Just checking where the sun is. Well, that will be a problem for Monica being left-handed with the serve her toss now will be looking into she'll be looking into the sun Fifteen all. Spent taking a little bit more time. Monica's making her work so hard with these ground stroke baseline rallies.
3480. That's the shot she likes to hit, and she'll like this one. Well, you can't get a much better return of serve right into the corner. So did the, the hit. Um, Monica Sellers just pounding the backhand side of her opponent until she finally gets the open court to the forehand. Game Sellers, she leads 3-1. And Karen Schwendt has found that when she does get to the net, as Wendy suggested at the start, she has some chance, but the longer she trades at the backcourt, the less likely it's proving. Friend had the right idea then, and the gentleman on your screen in the pinkish coloured shirt, Carole, Monica's father, and sitting next to him, her mother Esther. Love 30. I think it's difficult to come in behind your serve against Monica because she does have a great return of serve have to wait maybe until your next shot. Three great shots from Monica, all one-handed, forehands, and we know she has the ability to hit those shots when she is stretched and unable to get the two hands on the racket. Doing a lot of running around in that sun. My Celis is playing these points. Game Celis, she leads 4 1. Monica breaks again for a 4 1 lead. Getting 4 1. Blue skies above the National Tennis Centre. Shade for the fans, but so much for the players. Quiet, please. Thank you. Ah! 
Love 15. When Gabriella Sabatini played Monica at the Virginia, Virginia Slims Championships in New York last November, Gabriella used the drop shot quite a lot and was quite effective with it. It's a little unfortunate for Gabby that match that it was five sets because she led two sets to one. She would have uh, had the title at any other tournament. Of course, it was the first women's match to go to five sets since the US national title of 1901. She has that great power, Wendy, but occasionally she just shows that little bit of touch. Very good disguise on the backhand that time. It's also good to see the players using the drop shot more. Sometimes don't understand why Monica is playing Karen's forehand so much. Karen just loving the pace from Monica. Karen also taking a lot of time on this point. She's doing a lot of stalling. I think she's counted every string on that racket at least twice. She had lost only one game in two matches. Now she's lost two games in this set so far. Karen Schwent calls for a little cheer. Marcella's disguised that shot wonderfully. Just can't afford to give Monica any short balls. That one was awfully short.
15.30. Schwent played the right shot that time, came in on Monica's double-handed forehand side, and it would have been difficult for Monica to hit it cross-court, so Schwent hung on the, on the sideline. That was the right play. You look for the shot that your opponents are most likely to hit. And if they can hit the ones that's the low percentage, then uh, it's just too good. It's not just the speed she gets there, Wendy, it's the amount she can put on those drop shots. Well, it's a very good drop shot. But she gets the top spin on it, but she always goes for the high percentage shot, and that time over the middle of the net, the low part of the net. Second one of those. Serve for the first set, broken in the last service game, and really Karen Schwent at times is playing some very sensible tennis against her. Karen's got some good ground strokes, and her forehand side, especially dangerous. But she's moving very Quite well nice. around the court and uh, making Monica hit a few more groundies than she would have expected to. she couldn't get to. Well, pulling Monica wide. Monica had to hit a one-handed forehand. But great touch from Kishvent. Fifteen all. Perfect tactics from Schwent. Coming in on the double-handed forehand side of Salas and then looking for the shot back up the line. That's where Monica will go most of the time with that shot. Fifteen forty. Two break back points. There's another one she has to retrieve after that. Game 
Well, that is a very good game. She's certainly not being intimidated out there, and that's the one important thing for Karen. When she's had uh, some second serves, she's made Monica play them. Or actually, in a couple of those uh, returns, Monica hasn't had a chance to play them. Good anticipation at the net from Kishvent coming in on Monica's backhand that time, looking for the backhand cross court. Short return from Salish. This time Schwent was looking for the backhand cross court, but Salish was just a little too wise that time. Thirty fifteen. Spent putting the pressure on Salas, coming to the net every time in this game. Thirty forty. Number three, and that one's a little cruel. Well, it may be cruel, but uh, if she does happen to foot fault, you can't do much about the rules. And you can see, actually, with her back foot, her right foot, she did come across the line before she made contact with the ball. Still surprised that Monica is playing Karen's forehand so much. Well, 
the approach shot from Schwent struck so hard that she barely had time to get into the net after it. She was caught around the service line. Set point. Deuce. I don't think Monica Sellers would have been prepared for the struggle she's getting here today. Fence serve causing Monica all kinds of problems. Monica once again going down the line off the forehand when she is attacked on that side. Advantage, And there's the service speed for Karen Schwent. 121 kilometres an hour. Deuce. That 128 a little quicker. She's certainly been serving well, her second serve too. Just too tough. Advantage, Sellers. Oh, very good point from Tishvent because it was a good approach shot. She was way behind the service line, though. That that hurt her, but a great passing shot to set up. Full set point for Monica Sellers. Deuce. Six deers. Advantage, Sellers. Still another set point. Quiet, please. Sellers taking the first set, but getting far and away her toughest workout of the Australian Open so far. Quiet, please, ladies and gentlemen. Second set. And Quiet, Karen please. Schmidt, after that first set, may feel a little more aggressive in this one. Love 15. Errors there, Sellers eight, Schwent six. Uh, 
Unforced 14 to Schwent, 11 to Sellis. Fifteen all. Well, that error coming off to Schwent's racket because she's been trying to run around and hit a forehand. And it's very difficult when a left hand is serving to you and they're slicing it out to your back end and occasionally you'll come up with some pretty wild returns. Game Sellers. First game. Sellers takes second. the open game of the second set. The famous roof of the National Tennis Centre. And it makes this tournament a talking point all around the world. That and some superb tennis. Every time Karen Schwent thinks she's doing the right thing, Sellers does something like this. Well, at least Schwent is making Sellers come up with those winning shots. She's forcing her into hitting winners instead of waiting on, on the baseline and making her opponent run her around the court. So hard, but Karen just has to weather the fact that Sellis is going to do things like that. It must get frustrating at times. The important thing for Karen to remember is she's not making the error. Her opponent is coming up with a winner. And just keep positive about that. Use. 
advantage of spend. Schmidt's serve has improved as the match has come along. Advantage Kishpent. being very effective with the serve wide to Monica's double handed backhand. to admire about the way Karen Spent is playing this match and the way she's hanging in on some very big points. Love 30. She's certainly been able to trouble Sellers on serve. Karen can hardly believe that she missed that. She got the shot that she wanted to. And sometimes they say the hardest, sh the easiest shots are the hardest. And she just took her eye off the ball. Thank you. 